Hi, honey. Hi. How are you? Great. How are you? Good. Well, here, um, let's give a shot of this. Okay. This is a one of the old solar panels that got broken. Let's see if you can get a shot straight down at this. This is supposedly a fuse, okay? It is a fuse because it's the only thing that's here, right? And I, I see where it's soldered here um, to the, it's basically a, you know, but like if you look at this solar, let's look at this solar panel over here. So these, all these little are wires, right? And they all connect together. And that's what that fuse thing is soldered to, something like this. And so I've been wanting to parallel panels together and bump the amperage up. I'm not quite sure why yet, but I'm going to keep working on it. So these are series rated at uh, 10 amps. Fuse rating 20 amps, excuse me. So, and they put out 11.2 amps. So you can't put one, well you, what, what I came up with is yes, you can, you can put two together. So that you'll have, you'll be pushing the 20 amp series rating. Mm -hmm. And so first thing I thought was, well just put a bigger fuse in it. Yeah. What? I, what? Nothing. <laughs> Anyway, so I thought, put a bigger fuse in it. Oh. But, as you can see, when I tried this off, it's just solid, some kind of glue or something. Um, so I thought, well, maybe it's fused on the, uh, on the positive, no, on the negative side. It says minus. Uh, minus. <laughs> anyway, you get the picture. That's negative. <laughs> I hope. So that one's glued to. Okay. So I thought, well, maybe it's fused on the positive side. What do they have here? Oh, Jesus. Plus. <clears throat> it's got to be. Just. Yes, plus. <laughs> Here, zoom in on that. Plus. So, and that's where I started digging this out. To see maybe what's in those are a lot newer, obviously, but I'm pretty sure it's gotta be same the same. Uh, and, and the bottom line is they don't want you messing. So I will figure out how to put these back in later. So these are bifacial. That means they, they get 20, I think we went over this, but they get 25% from the bottom. Right? So we're going to be using these, hopefully, in some structural applications, like lean-to type, and uh, Carport, maybe, mm -hmm. for, or a greenhouse, maybe, mm -hmm. and they, you know. <clears throat> so anyway, um, we are going to. We have a bunch of these we're going to use for testing. I'll show you where we're going to put them. <clears throat> Dog waiting at the door. Hi, Aggie. Hi, good girl. So we're gonna put we're gonna put a string of these, as many as we can fit, on here, along here. And the plan is to run them. Well, we're gonna put I'm gonna try to put two in parallel, and then put those in series. So it would be series parallel. So. We will 
be running separate cables for two individual panels. And then we're going to bring it all down here. Here, come on. Oh. <laughs> I just sat down. Of course. And so we're going to bring all we're going to bring all the cables and combine them here. And um, then we are going to run DC straight up to the garage and hook up to the inverter that we filmed earlier. Um, What's that one called again? Up in the garage? Magnum. Magnum. Uh, yeah, and it's nice. So this. There's going to be, well, we've got room for six. And you see, <coughs> that inverter up there is rated at input at 145 amps. This one is rated for 10 amps per string. 30 amp total, obviously. But that shows you the difference between equipment that we have here. This is basically, the SMA, I, in my opinion, is just a trickle charger. It's just a fancy trickle charger is all it is. I may be wrong. This is all my opinion, right? So, but anyway, we're going to, what we want to do is simplify things. And what we're going to go do is we're going to go inside. I'm also going to, <clears throat> this is going to be quite a bit of combined power right here. And I think I'll run... I uh, will run a leg inside for testing because we're going to test microwaves and we're going to test washing machines and we're going to test dryers and let's go here let's go inside I've got some other stuff it doesn't seem to me that it would be that hard to convert a washing machine to DC and if you have a fully charged 48 volt battery bank, which is doable, and we're gonna look at it. Wanna go look, Aggie? <laughs> I got a picture of her tongue. <laughs> I just I don't believe it cracked. Okay. She, she just cannot stand me inside. So I think I'm gonna get a chair. Okay. Or do I not need one? All right. So I've got some stuff laid out here. Okay. These are all the connectors. The MC4 connectors that I'm going to use. I'm going to make some uh, parallel couplings, which is basically just taking two of these, soldering them together. And got to come up with something. Okay. But let's talk about the DC thing. All right. Here's some things that a lot of the older people will recognize this and probably the younger people won't, but thermostat. <clears throat> this gets converted from, this has to be converted to DC power in order to operate. Just an example. Here is, everybody's familiar with this. This changes AC to DC. Everybody has these. I mean, that's not an understatement. Can I see the front of it? Hold it up to the camera. Dell power, uh, this is a power source. Can, I, can you hold it up so that I can see it? There we go. Awesome. And this one converts 110 to... Nineteen and a half volts. And what do we have here? We have another one. Uh, this one, one ten to twelve volts. Here's a sneaky little one here. Look at this one. You'd never know. This one doesn't even say DC on it. It's, it's microscopic print, and it just has the DC symbol. It's so small I can't see it, but it doesn't matter. You see, thing. Are these chargers? Yes. Oh. This, no, not necessarily. 
Well, but I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this charges your computer. Yeah, as I would know, though. This, mm -hmm. it's a power supply. Yep. So, the print is so small, it looks like. Output, 6 volts. 400 milliamps DC, so more DC. I mean, 12 volts DC. It just, you know, everything has even, I think the TV, once it goes from AC to the TV, first thing it does is convert it to DC. Uh, here, so here we go. This is a, I got this on Amazon. This is a 36, so I could hook this up to my 48 volt battery bank and drop it down to, this is called a, a DC to DC converter, and then I could drop it down to 12 volts, which, whatever, and these are, you know, this is a, there's a, these are, you can go a few volts either way. So which one, this could, you could run this stuff, <clears throat> and, you know, you could run, the, you could run all this stuff through this. And if you wanted to be, then you could get a, this might not be the right thing, but this is, I got this off Amazon for eight bucks. This is a speed controller or a voltage controller as far as I'm, they do make specific DC. I thought this was a DC, but this says pulse width modulation, which I associate with AC, but I have seen it. It's blowing my mind that some of the differences but anyway so you could vary voltage see you could, they do make DC voltage controllers that are must be similar to this I this might be one I don't know I gotta find out um so you could you could dial in any of these voltages and operate your Dell computer with your 48 volt battery bank um this is all theory here I, through, I'm getting ready for the, uh, here's some pieces of copper for making uh, bus bars, extra thick. <laughs> Maybe, that would take a lot of solar panels to. <clears throat> so here's some stuff we're gonna test. This is a heating element out of that on-demand water heater I have upstairs, the 13,000 watt on-demand water heater and um, I'm not sure I don't think water flows over this I'm pretty sure it doesn't but um, again I'm gonna put exactly the same amount of DC voltage and amps as this calls for with AC and see what happens same thing here these are some high dollar heating elements and um, because uh, I'm going to go big in the heating water with solar like we looked at over there. Um, so this is, oh yeah, this is, this is a DC water heating element. And I think what I wanted to do is, I think this might be an AC. Yes. So, so we're going to find out, see what the difference is. As, you know, someday <laughs> down the line. <laughs> I hope I get time to do all this, but yeah, just to see, you know, put the same voltages exactly the same, and then switch them, right? And then see what what kind of degradation you get, or what whatever. What what's going to be the big difference if you want to put, you know, if you just want to put DC to your AC element. You got two or three panels on your roof to heat water up. Here's a heating element out of a <clears throat> dryer. Um, I'm going to put DC to that and see what happens in the fan. And you know, somebody out there on YouTube probably has all, knows what's going to happen, <laughs> but I don't. And I'm itching to find out. I mean, somebody's probably going to say, well, listen, you know, there's probably some, whatever, there's going to be people that already have the answers, I guess, but I don't. And, you know, that's part of the fun of even doing videos is 
I've had so much fun watching other people, and it's been inspiring to me, you know, to just go for it. And um, you'll never know, you know until you figure it out yourself. So that's kind of where we're at so far today. Um, All right. So let's take another look at this. See, this is pretty simple. This is just 10 gauge wire. Here, let me, let me look. Hi. I'm with you. It's just 10 gauge wire. Okay. And I, it, it's, the uh, thing is, is that, you know, it's not that complicated. I mean, up to this point, it's not. And I'm gonna carefully cut these away and find out exactly where the fusible point is, the fusible link. So. All right. All right.